I'm Hayden Bixby. I'm a member of the English department here at Edmonds Community College, and I'm here to introduce you to Mike Van Quickenborn, a speaker coming up as part of the Conversations in the Humanities series, sponsored by the Arts, Culture, and Civic Engagement. Uh, the talk itself will be on February 24th at 7 p.m. in the Black Box Theater, and it will be called Seriously Funny, Humor, Film, and philosophy. I have Mike on the line. Hi, Mike. Hello. <coughs> uh, I hope that people will be uh, will turn out in great numbers for your talk. Uh, can you tell me why you think it's important for people to understand philosophical concepts? You teach at Everett, Everett Community College in the philosophy department, um, yes. and why film or the arts is a good way to teach those concepts. Yes, well, absolutely. Um, one of the problems is that philosophy, I, I do believe, of course, that it's very important, but that it, it sort of has a, a reputation, perhaps, as being dry and abstract and um, hard to sort of get a grasp on. Um, and when I use film in my philosophy classes, I primarily use that as a way to motivate uh, important philosophical issues. Um, a, a common thing that uh, philosophy instructors introduce their students to uh, would be Descartes, Rene Descartes. And um, Rene Descartes talks about how um, all of what we experience in life might be an illusion uh, generated perhaps by an evil genius. Um, and when students read that, they aren't necessarily... I think, completely engaged by his proposal. Uh, but when you pair that essay with um, a film like The Matrix, uh, The Matrix, of course, is very engaging, and I think more so it really gets students and people to think about the possibilities that uh, what we seem to perceive is actually some kind of an illusion, perhaps generated by artificial intelligence as laid out in, in The Matrix um, or some other entity. So, yeah, I think it really gets people to think more carefully and uh, enthusiastically about, I think, what are important questions. Great. You mentioned, um, I think you mentioned The Matrix. Are there other films you use in your classes that you might also use in your talk? Oh, yes, absolutely. So um, all three of the films that I'll be showing clips of uh, in my talk, um, I use those films in their entirety in my philosophy in the cinema class at Everett Community College. Um, so we're talking about, um, uh, first of all, uh, the film Adaptation, um, another film being John Malkovich, and then I end with the film I Heart Huckabees. Um, and uh, the two, first two films there are uh, directed by Spike Jones, and then the screenwriter is Charlie Kaufman, and the last one is a David O. Russell uh, film. And so, yeah, absolutely, I use those, and I think they really motivate some really interesting philosophical questions that I'll be, you know, talking about in February. Uh, some of the films that you mentioned are among my favorites. Do you think oh, the great. filmmakers themselves have an interest in philosophy? I think undoubtedly, uh, yes. Um, and you can, you know, depending on the, um, the filmmaker, but, you know, in fact, like, for example, the well-known director, Terrence Malick, um, was studying for a Ph.D. in philosophy himself, and, and other uh, directors and screenwriters I know have had um, exposure to or even degrees in philosophy. And I think, you know, one of the things about film and philosophy that I like to share with my students, because they're always wondering or worried that, you know, either studying philosophy or getting a degree in philosophy is sort of, um, at least pr practically speaking, sort of a waste of time, that their parents are going to worry that they'll get a good-paying job, um, well, one of the things that philosophy can do is really encourage creative thinking, um, and whether that takes you into, you know, film production in some form, um, or creative writing, or just writing of all sorts, um, film can really, I think, get people to think about possibilities and scenarios that um, they might not otherwise consider, and I think so that's a good use of this. We've talked a little bit about film and philosophy, but the title of your talk also includes humor. What's yeah. funny about philosophy? <laughs> yeah, I think this is sort of one of uh, the overlooked uh, possibilities in philosophy, and that's one of the reasons I focus on it in my talk. Um, basically, I think that humor can uh, lower people's defenses. 
Um, again, in philosophy, you often are discussing topics that are somewhat um, maybe threatening to a person's worldview. And um, if you can incorporate humor, uh, it loosens people up a bit, gets them to lower defenses, gets them to open up to different possibilities. So um, I think that, again, all three of those films I mentioned uh, really, you know, allow us to consider very abstract topics like, you know, what is the nature of truth, for example, um, which might be sort of intimidating at first glance, but um, if you can throw in some laughs uh, in, in a film about that topic, I think people are more willing to consider the ideas, you know, presented therein um, and consider the question, you know, well, how do we really know what is true, for example? So you uh, present the material in a way that is accessible to your students and let them have a less threatening good time with the concepts. Do you think you have more fun teaching with this method or do your students have more fun learning with this method? Uh, it's definitely a two-way street. Um, you know, I, I certainly hope my students are, you know, enjoying it more so than just, you know, sort of having to read some sometimes dry uh, philosophical texts. Um, and certainly, without a doubt, um, I can't teach and not interject humor. It's just my personality. So, um, you know, I, I, that's just who I am. And so it's, I think, both good for both, you know, my students and uh, myself, for sure. Well, is there anything you want our audience to know about what they can expect at your talk in February? Well, I would say that, you know, I would say that students or, or people, audience members, should come with their questions. Um, so I strive to make sure there's uh, plenty of time to uh, talk about things and not just me lecturing uh, at them, but uh, asking them for their feedback, asking them for their questions. Um, and also I would say that uh, if people have not seen these films, these films now are approaching um, 10, 15 years old at this point, um, that, that should be no barrier to, you know, encouraging them to come. Um, I will kind of give the overview for each of the three films, um, and I can certainly answer any questions uh, that they might have about them. Um, I also have to say, and I'll repeat this in the talk, that, you know, I won't be issuing any spoiler alerts uh, just because I, I figure that the uh, statute of limitations on spoiler alerts is about 10 years, so <laughs> these are all beyond that. Uh, so, yeah, but I just encourage people to come with their questions and, and ready to hear about some interesting ideas as presented in these films and in philosophy. Well, we're really looking forward to hosting you, and uh, thank you so much for talking with me today. I, yeah. I want to encourage all of you to come on February 24th, 7 p.m. in the Black Box Theater at Edmonds Community College to hear Mike Van Quickenborn's talk, Seriously Funny, Humor, Film, and Philosophy. We'll look forward to seeing you then.